I would suggest that you take your question and generalize it, not to the United States, but to any great power. Okay, so is the are the politics of any great power uh, undertaken out of a an, a, 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 an intention to create the benefit and the, you know help the people of the world? I think it's, you know you have to really look hard to find examples. Uh, Great power actions don't take place in a social and economic va uh, vacuum. They're carried out effectively by the concentrations of power within the society. Now, that differs in different societies. Like in the old Soviet Union, it was the Kremlin, you know, party apparatus. In the United States, the corporate sector. Okay, so if you want to understand uh, policies, a good place to look is the interests of those who formulate them. And it's very rare that they act in the interests of others. Who, who would expect that? And of course, the intellectual classes have to write a story which says they're always acting in the, in the interests of others out of pure altruism. But that's almost universal throughout history. So we discount it. And we ask what they're actually doing. And yeah, sometimes it happens to be beneficial to others. So it takes a humanitarian intervention, a use of force, in violation of international law. Well, if you take a look at the post-World War II period, you can find a few cases where uh, use of force uh, did put an end to major atrocities. Now, they don't enter into the canon. We don't talk about them. And the reason is because of who carried them out and what the US reaction was. Now, the only two cases I know of of any significance are uh, the Indian invasion of uh, uh, East Pakistan, now Bangladesh in 1971, which did stop uh, huge massacres, and the Vietnamese invasion of Cambodia in 1979, which put an end to Pol Pot's atrocities just when they were peaking. So they had you know, very humane uh, consequences. Uh, were they humanitarian interventions? No, because those weren't the intentions. Those were the consequences. But why don't they enter into the canon? Well, because it wasn't us. We didn't carry it out. Or rather, it was them. And what they do can never be any good. Uh, furthermore, even worse, uh, the United States strongly opposed both of those interventions. It threatened war with India. It you know, sent aircraft carriers into the Bay of Bengal to threaten them for this crime. In the case of Vietnam, I mean, they were just bitterly denounced for putting Pol Pot's atrocities to an end. Uh, the US supported a Chinese invasion to punish them for the crime. Uh, and the U.S. immediately turned to supporting Pol Pot. Well, okay, so therefore their intervention can't count as humanitarian. Uh, but uh, try to find some other examples. Uh, so yes, there are cases where the use of force happened to have uh, benign effects, uh, but not because it was carried out with a humane intent. And the cases don't count uh, unless we did them. But when we did them, it either succeeds in crushing resistance, in which case it's hailed as a great achievement, or it fails, in which case we say, well, it was a mistake, you know, our benign intentions were, couldn't be realized. Now, that's the canon of intellectual history. That we see it right now, for example. So take, say, uh, Iraq, and, and take a roughly comparable example, Chechnya. Okay. Uh, in Chechnya, uh, uh, first Yeltsin, then Putin, responded to Chechen terror, really significant Chechen terror in Russia, with a vicious invasion, which destroyed the capital city, Grozny, you know, killed tens of thousands of people. Uh, and then, uh, according to US reporters who've been there, it ended up very successful. Uh, New York Times reporters visiting say Grozny is a booming city. You know, construction everywhere, everybody has electricity, you know, no Russian troops around. It's run by Chechen security forces. I mean, there's some guerrillas off in the hill somewhere. We don't call that a success. We call it a crime. You know, they succeeded in pacifying and reconstructing the country, and now it's working pretty well. And we consider it a crime, rightly. 
All right, now let's take the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Well, you know, if General Petraeus had been able to even minimally approach what Putin achieved in Chechnya, he'd probably be crowned king. Uh, you know, he hasn't been able to achieve that. But, you know, so instead of, uh, you know, it, it, the country survives. I mean, Baghdad, for example, is a gated city, which people can't go from one place to another. And there's been massive ethnic cleansing, so killing has reduced because there's nobody to kill anymore. Uh, the uh, uh, militias uh, have been uh, armed, trained, and funded, uh, so they control their territories, so violence has reduced a little. The place is a total wreck. Uh, there's maybe a million people killed, you know, a couple of million displaced and refugees, uh, but it's kind of, uh, you know, violence somewhat reduced. So not as successful as Putin in Chechnya, but, you know, to some extent, uh, kind of... Uh, reduced the level of violence that we created in the first place. And that's praised across the spectrum. Say, so, okay, the question of uh, the surge, let's say, is settled because look how wonderful it was. I mean, nowhere near as wonderful as Putin and Chechnya, but uh, nevertheless, we did it, so it must be right, even if the place is left a total wreck that may never recover. Well, okay, that's uh, it, the way within our doctrinal system, we look at the use of violence by ourselves and others. And this translates to others. They do the same thing. Now, is the use of violence ever permissible? Well, I'm not an absolute pacifist. An absolute pacifist would say no. I don't agree. But I think there's a very heavy burden of proof. You want to use violence, whether it's a domestic dispute or a, you know, international affairs, you have a very heavy burden of proof to meet. And I think if you look carefully, it's very hard to meet that burden. And the cases that are accepted, whether it's personal relations or international affairs, just don't stand up, almost without exception.